Today I'm going to talk about Brian Clemens' Thriller and the episodes Someone at the Top of the Stairs. It's from Season 1, Episode 3, and the show Thriller, it made six seasons. And this is from 1973. It's an interesting show, it did 43 episodes, and the episodes are over an hour in length. So they're sort of like, almost like TV movies in a way. I used to watch this show on ITV when I was a kid. That, that was in the early, late 70s, I think. And I used to be really scared watching it. I remember the great music and title sequence. That scary red round ring and the fish-eyed photo in the middle. Really effective and creepy start. tend to be like psychological thrillers with women in peril and a few of the episodes of the 43 have a supernatural um, theme to them and this one that I'm reviewing today does so excellent show from the 70s Brian Clemens the creator of the show did some excellent TV shows as well the Avengers the professionals he also wrote some um, excellent horror films as well. I've review reviewed a couple on this channel. Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde, Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter for Hammer. Brilliant films, he's an excellent writer. Another good thing about this episode, someone at the top of the stairs, it stars Donna Mills and she's in three episodes of this series. She made this one in 1973. She made one Deadly Owner in 1974 and in 1975 she made The Killer With Two Faces. This one and One Deadly Owner are excellent. Especially One Deadly Owner, I think that's probably my favourite of the entire series. About a car that moves by itself. Really creepy. Donna Mills is also in one of my favourite films. Play Misty for me playing opposite Clint Eastwood. Excellent film that, so she's a really good actress. It's interesting that the three episodes that she's in are uh, three of the best as well. So that proves how good she is. The show thriller had to use an American actress in each of the stories, like either an actor or an actress. But that to be American because they wanted to sell it to America. <laughs> it's a really weird plot. To um, students, rent this place, um, accommodations and the people who run it are totally weird. They keep looking through spy holes at them and they're always using the word marvellous and it all gets explained later why. Yeah, marvellous this, marvellous that. <laughs> Fucking <hell. laughs> Some strange bloody scenes as well. When the girls are having a shower there's like a peephole, so the spy and watching them have a, having a shower, and this little lad gets caught looking through the, the spy hole, and he he, uh, he gets wrong with his father, and when they go into the door, the girl who got spied on can hear them laughing, so they're just making fun of it. What do you think you're doing in there? Come out here right now. What's going on? Look in there. What? Look, look in there. Have a go. Hey, that bloody kid looking at that bloody woman for the paypal. Dirty little bastard. Kick his bloody ass. <laughs> okay. Also, there's like a, a colonel character and he pinches clothing out of the drawers like tights go missing bra goes missing probably some panties really strange well they must still be here you know they were here you haven't seen them have you chrissy what my tights the ones with the pattern on you haven't seen them have you no yeah, that bloody colonel pinching her bloody panties 
I bet the dirty bastard had them over his head all night. <laughs> That's a creepy start as well. Right at the beginning, this woman is kind of sort of like sleepwalking or something and she walks up these stairs into this room. The door opens, she enters, the door closes and then you can hear her screaming her head off. Supernatural happens. There's this uh, man who's living in this room and he's lived there for over a hundred years because he meddled in the, the black arts so he could live longer. He locked in a bloody room for over a hundred years. I thought the fucking lockdown was bad enough. <laughs> the people who are running the place don't even exist. He's will the they died and he's like using his powers to create these people who are running the hotel. So they don't even exist all these people. And that explains why they keep saying marvellous because it's a word he uses a lot. So a dead creepy. Oxy and Elgar. You saw them because I wanted you to see them. Like Thurston just now. I willed him upon you. Also, towards the end, there's a, a good twist. You think the guy's finally been killed right at the end. And the character Donna Mills is playing, she starts talking like he did. So it insinuates that his personality presence or whatever has gone into her. So he didn't die. He's taken over her. Really a uh, good twist ending that. The plot's a little bit like um, the film From Beyond the Grave, the, the story about the door where there's a man who lives in the room and he's lived there for centuries. So it's a little bit similar like that film. What I, what I like about this show is it, it uses subtle horror. The 1970s were excellent for that. A lot of fans will think the show's a bit slow, so it, it's not for everyone. But if you don't mind, like, slow pierced horror that's subtle, that's not over the top, then you'll love this show. It's excellent. Reminds us a lot of the Christmas ghost stories. The Baby Say Maid. That was, like, slow, subtle horror. Not a lot of, like, effects or anything. But it's creepy all the more for it. Because it's not overblown horror, it has, like, a nightmarish feel to it and also a bit of realism about it as well. These um, 1970s shows that did horror, they were, they were really effective. Sometimes if you have like special effects in horror films or TV shows, it looks a bit too over the top. So it doesn't seem as real somehow. But if you have sort of like subtle things happen, it can be more creepier. A bit like the horror film The Haunting. That doesn't have loads of special effects, but it's dead creepy. And this is a good example of um, how not showing stuff's more effective than showing stuff. And I love the music in the show as well, especially the titles. And also, like, when creepy stuff happens throughout the, the episodes, it's got that weird, um, creepy 70s sound to it. And also, with it looking grainy as well, like, 70s TV shows looked a bit grainy. Uh, that kind of gives it a bit of realism as well. So really effective. You should check, definitely check this show out if you haven't seen it. But I was really impressed by this. So out of 10, I think I'll give it 9. 9 out of 10. Really effective. What do you think about the show Bones? Do you like it? I have one word for it, Phil. Marvellous. <laughs> uh, I knew he'd say marvellous. Anyway, bye everyone. See ya. Bye. bye.